One of the amazing things to me is how no matter how much evil is around that the human conscience is still sensitive to sin. Join me as we listen to Deet Eamon share some of the things that happened to her as a leader of the Dutch resistance as she experienced evil forgiveness among the German people and those during the Second World War. Do, do you think that any of the Germans that you met or saw in the Netherlands, do you, do you think they felt guilty or bad about what they were doing? I mean, some of them were really hard Nazis, but some of the German soldiers, do, do you think they felt that maybe this was wrong, what they were doing? Do, do, did you ever feel that they, they were concerned well, about their behavior? it's very interesting that you ask that because uh, after the war, I was invited to come to Germany, and then really they explained they were forced, they had no choice to go in the Hitler Youth. All the boys. Right, the, the boys were forced to go into the Hitler Youth, old. yes. And like the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. So they first did all fun things, so they all loved it. But then all the coaches, they were very fanatic Nazis. So they started telling them the Jews had done this and then. Yeah, they started brainwashing these boys. And yeah. by the time they were 17, 18, they were brainwashed. Yeah and the majority, and very few, and the Bible wasn't being read anymore, yes. and the churches were empty, and they, there was nothing, no religious life really anymore. Hitler believed in providence. Now, what is providence? Can be anything. Yeah. So. Well, Hitler also, he really deceived people in making them, I guess, kind of believe that he was a, a spiritual person, that he had a mission for Germany, and I mean, I think he, he got the young people to believe that. You know, that they were really on almost a divine mission, did, really. Yeah. But after the war, I was in Germany, and then I thought, yeah, you see how that happened, that the juice was poisoned. Yes. And that is what all dictatorships do, mm -hmm. in Russia, too, in, uh, years ago. And so those kids were poisoned, and they didn't know, and they followed rules, and they... And, and the German as a character type, we are stubborn, but they are followers. I, and you read the history, they follow someone. They were very obedient, yeah. following a leader. So yeah. They followed the leader. But now after the war, and I think that's beautiful, I spoke all over Germany, and I had to speak for a big TV station. And then after that happened, many people they, at the TV station let me know that eight million people listened. Eight, Eight million, million Germans, Germans were listening to the and thing. And many wrote to the TV station. Yes. And they sent me those letters, and I still have them. They are now in Calvin. No, the government of the Netherlands wanted it. And they asked for forgiveness, what they did. They were asking for forgiveness. Were some of these actual, some of them soldiers that might have been in the Netherlands, or just in general, they, they, they wanted? They asked for forgiveness, and yes. all. And I heard that in 1980, in the year 1980, 1980. officially, the government of Germany asked forgiveness to the government of Israel. Did you know that? Yes, it's just remarkable that there was a really a desire to get reconciliation and to start again. And yes. I was not, I, I went several times to Germany and for years it was compulsory that they told what they had done yeah. in the high schools and in the higher classes of mm -hmm. the, so, and in the universities. So, I think that is kind of beautiful that they don't hide the horrible things they did. Yes. That they really took yes. the responsibility to for it. take responsibility for it. Because let's face it, the Japanese bombarded Pearl Harbor without mm -hmm. any reason. Right. They never have said they are sorry. No, that's but really true. There hasn't been any really sense of apology. One of the things that made a huge impact to me listening to Deet Eamon share was her talking about sharing some of her story in Germany after the Second World War. And I was very moved by hearing her sharing the story of how German people from all over Germany and listening to her on television would write in or would call in and really ask her to forgive them. And really we're looking for reconciliation, we're looking for a sense of God's grace over the things that some of them knew that they had done during the war that were wrong. And it reminded me on the deepest level that God's image, his conscience, his life has been impressed on all of us. And that even during the worst times of human evil and during a world war, that that human conscience is still alive, sensitive to sin, and ultimately at some level is seeking forgiveness 
and reconciliation. And I think that should be one of the greatest encouragements to all of us that watch this, to think about the fact that the Lord's purposes are alive and well as we listen to the story of Deed Eman and her life in Germany.